All right, we're playing Crime in the Ten Commandments. As I said, we have not shared these news stories with each other prior to the show, so this will be the the first time that we'll we'll be hearing these uh, these stories from each other and reacting to them. The first one I wanted to to mention comes from here in Texas. It's out of Sugarland, Texas, which is a, a suburb of Houston, about half hour south of Houston. And this is from from a while back, but it recent it just came back up this year. The evening of December tenth, two thousand three, began with a special announcement at the Whitaker residence. Bart Whitaker told his brother Kevin and his parents Kent and Trisha Whitaker that he had finished his final exams at nearby Sam Houston State and would be graduating. To honor his achievement, his parents presented him with a Rolex watch, and that night the family went to a pop- popular restaurant to celebrate. But when the family arrived home, Kevin, the brother, stepped in the door and got shot by an unknown assailant. This was uh, recalled by Kent, the father who survived the attack and still lives in that home. Trisha stepped through the door, their mother, she was shot. And then Kent went through the door and was shot as well. Bart ran into the house and wrestled a bit with the um, with the assailant who shot him in the arm. A neighbor called 911 and responding officers found 19-year-old Kevin dead. A single bullet shot and a bullet wound to the chest. Trisha Whitaker died of a single gunshot wound. After clearing the house, police initially thought they were dealing with a burglary. When they were released from the hospital, Bart moved back in the house with his father. For the next seven months, he spent every free moment with his dad studying the Bible, where uh, while the investigation made very little progress, one night, a man walked into the Sugarland police station and introduced himself as a friend of Bart Whitaker's. Uh, His name was Adam Hip, and Hip uh, revealed that Bart had hatched a murder plot that was aborted at the last minute. The police uh, verified the story and went to the father and told him that they suspected his son in the killings. And uh, Bart then, in July of of 2004, fled the country, went to Mexico, a town about 50 miles south of the border, using the name Rudy Rios, and he befriended some people, started going to church there. And he told his new friends that um, his gunshot wound was the result of combat action in Viet- in uh, Vietnam. In, <laughs> in <laughs> little, little late for that. Uh, was the result of combat action in uh, Afghanistan. Um, back in Sugarland, another revelation happened. Uh, a man named Stephen Champagne showed up at the police station and said that he and a friend of his were actually in cahoots with Bart. They set up the fake graduation dinner um, while Bart lured the family away. Uh, The friends went inside the Whitaker home, disabled the alarm, and waited for the family to come home. And then they they shot the the four family members. The the shooting Bart was just part of the plan. It was a ruse to, to convince everyone that he was a victim. One of them told police that Bart had told them his family was worth a lot of money. Police said that the motivation for the killing was that Bart stood to inherit one and a half million dollars in the event of his parents' death. But Uh, dear old dad survived. Dear old dad survived. Yes, exactly. Police, while putting together the the physical evidence that needed to, to link Bart to the murders, they didn't know that Bart was hiding in Mexico. Until... The actual Rudy Rios showed up at the police station and said that he sold Bart his identity and helped him sneak into Mexico. Rios was paid, I think they said $3,000, I I read in another story, for his identity. And then once he found out there was a reward for Bart's arrest, (laughs) (laughs) figured he'd cash in again. So Bart was, uh, was arrested in Mexico without incident in September of 2005. And in March 2007, a jury convicted Whitaker on the capital murder of his mother and younger brother. So before we explain why this is relevant now, why this is coming back up now, which commandments do you do you suspect are involved in this story? All of them. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and of course, I, I say that, you know, jokingly, but half seriously, uh, that you know, we are told that if we have broken one commandment, we have broken them all. So, uh, right? Yeah, we we we've got greed and covetousness. You know, with the, the we can go with obviously murder. Holy cow! <laughs> Fourth commandment issues, obviously. <laughs> that one jumps right off the page. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, you 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 
plot to kill your own parents. You know, it's... I remember growing up in Southern California when the uh, Menendez brothers murdered their parents, and that was you know, mm-hmm. big news out there, and kind of a similar thing where there was wealth involved and whatnot, and... Right. He couldn't have just been happy with the Rolex watch. No, apparently not. He uh, he tried to claim that he, in a 48 hours interview, he, he tried to tell people that... that um, the motivation or that he hated his parents because he just didn't feel loved or he felt like he could never live up to their expectations, which... Sounds like he wasn't a terribly lovable person if he's willing to do something like that. <laughs> right. My gosh. So you've got the seventh commandment, obviously, I guess, the the, the, the in, intended theft. We've got the eighth commandment. Right. The bearing false witness in relation to the murders. And then, of course, I guess the eighth would also apply to the... The identity, the false identity. Right. And the stories that he told people in Mexico about how he was a war vet. Um, what else? Interestingly, I, is there's kind of a third commandment angle here because even in, in the months after the murder, when he went, he studied the Bible with his dad and then he, he found a church and attended church in Mexico. So he, right. Oddly keeping the third. And then ultimately, I guess, as all crimes are a crime against the first commandment, loving uh, God with all your heart. Um, he desired things that God hadn't promised to him, and and um, he violated the first, ultimately. all of Like we've talked about before, you start somewhere down at the bottom, usually somewhere in covetousness, and wind your way up, and ultimately you end up in the first. So all this went down 15 years ago, but, but this comes back up this year in 2019 as Bart Whitaker's execution was uh, was approaching and CBS News their 48 hours program covered this Kent Whitaker uh, from the night that the shooting happened said that whoever did it he forgave everybody involved he said it's a gift of God that allows me to do this I think he gave me this gift that when I found out it was my son, it would be a legitimate forgiveness. Wow. I believe as a Christian that God can and does forgive and change people's hearts. If they're sorry, if they repent, if they ask his forgiveness for real, he will forgive them. And so he started arguing in favor of clemency for his son. The jury sentenced him to death. Bart's execution was scheduled for February 22nd. And the week before he was going to go to the... um, To be executed, Kent made a plea to the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles and asked them to spare his life, and the board recommended clemency. And 40 minutes before the execution, Governor Abbott commuted his sentence to life. Wow. When you boil the Ten Commandments down to their essence, you've really got two. Love your God with your whole heart and love your neighbor as yourself. We pray the Lord's Prayer to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So tie tie that to the commandments. Ah, caught me off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I saved that. <laughs> Another segment of Stump the Pastor brought to you by Arm Lutheran Radio. That's right. Um, this is, you know, it, interestingly enough, just this past Wednesday, I also had confirmation instruction, and we were going over the parable of the Good Samaritan, just discussing that. The The idea of loving our neighbor doesn't necessarily mean just loving those people that, you know, live next door to us, that, you know, we, we like them, we hang out with them, they're the person we asked for help, and we're, you know, got an issue that we need dealt with or whatnot. So, you know, we've got love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's the, the basic summary of the first table of the law. And this father has very aptly reflected that because it, he's not reflecting the kind of you know love that we think of in a worldly sense, which often is just a, a way to describe our uh, affinity for something, whether we like something or not, but a, a true love, a self-giving love, a love that says, no matter what you've done, I still love you and I still forgive you. You know, that just that just blows my mind. If, if this kid's life, you know, of course, obviously his life has changed because of his own evil. But uh, if that doesn't bring him to repentance, you know, what else could? Um, 
But as far as, you know, loving our neighbor, that getting back to the parable of the Good Samaritan, uh, there's something about the Samaritans and Jews that, that sometimes is overlooked when we talk about that parable. We look at, oh, it's so nice, he took care of this guy who he didn't even know and whatnot. <laughs> the Jews and Samaritans hated each other, <laughs> right? you know? Um, uh, so the, the fact that it's, you know, loving our neighbor, it's about showing the love of Christ to those people we don't even like. If you enjoyed this clip of Armed Lutheran Radio, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, check out our podcast, Armed Lutheran Radio, if you enjoy these kinds of discussions about the moral and ethical issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. If you would like to support our mission uh, and hear more, keep us doing what we do, then uh, be sure to check out the Reformation Gun Club. We are listener-supported. And that means that we don't have advertising. We don't have any sponsors. We rely on our listeners to keep us going. So you can check out all of that and get access to lots of exclusive content for as little as a dollar a month. Look for a link in the show notes for our website and for the Reformation Gun Club as well, plus any other helpful links uh, related to today's topic. Thank you all for watching. Christ's blessings to you, and I'll talk to you next time.